Hey all you cats and kittens, welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. We're in the month of October. We're looking at things that are spooky. And this is maybe spooky for the wrong reasons. Um, what I want to talk about today are some of the good old-fashioned costumes that we wore as kids. When it was, you know, rolling into October and Halloween was coming. For my generation, at least, at least for probably most of us, that meant going to the grocery store or maybe um, maybe a dime store. Which, by the way, that tells you how things have changed, huh? Dime stores, now we talk about dollar stores. Um, and you'd go to the aisle where they had the Halloween stuff and they would have... Oh, I mean, they'd have little makeup kits and they'd have, you know, some maybe some like Dracula black type capes. Because you could use those. Maybe they'd have some witch hats. Probably blow mold. Um, not cloth. And they would have a whole bunch of Collegeville and Ben Cooper costumes. These were very popular. They were affordable. I think they were useful for mom and dad. Because the whole costume was in one little box. And of course, they most of them, most of them, were uh, were licensed. So it was some character that kids were going to like. And you can see in this one, now this is, I actually have, this This is from my own childhood. A couple odds and ends that have all been put into this one little box. And you can see the front of the box is coming apart. Um, and yet the memories remain. So let's take a look at this box top real quick first. We have... Collegeville TV Comics Costume with Mask. We have the famous Flame Retarded because Flame Retardant had not apparently become a term of art. And if you can maybe make out I don't know if it'll show up clearly enough here. We have the price sticker from Grand Central and I do not remember Grand Central existing. $2.39 so this particular costume was Popeye, a 220 medium for 8 to 10 year olds, fits child 45 to 50 inches tall. Fab fabric complies with U.S. Flammable Fabrics Act, additionally treated to retard flame. Disposable do not wash, washing removes flame retardancy. So this wasn't washed, so thankfully I could, I, I could try to set it on fire here and it wouldn't work. Collegeville TV Comic Custom has one only. Pretty much the same thing on the other side. Made in USA. And then we have the other side. Costume with mask. And you know, I don't think I see any kind of date on this. So, now this was my Popeye costume. I honestly do not remember what age I was when I wore that. Now, but first thing you see in here is a mask from a different costume. This is Underdog. Underdog and Popeye were two of my favorite characters back in the day. I well remember this one. You can see how cheap the mask is. It's coming apart. No rubber band on the back. So when you would get these things, no, you were not allowed to play with them. Although usually mom would let you get the mask out to mess with, at least to try it on. And the first thing that would happen with these masks was the damn rubber band would come off. So I don't know if I ever wore one of these in my life that um, my dad had not had to staple a rubber band to the back of. Take a rubber band, cut it in half, and you'd use that. Um, and back in those days, you always had rubber bands. Your junk drawer, you had rubber bands, you had twist ties from bread, uh, and you might have string, especially in an earlier age when a lot of things were tied with string. Because, you know, mom and grandma would tell you, you never know when you're going to need these things. And everybody got a newspaper back in the day. So you always had rubber bands handy, which was awesome for rubber band fights. So here we go. And you see, I don't know if you can tell, but right here, you see kind of where my finger is. That little slit right there, I for some reason as a child, it was irresistible 
to put your tongue in that little slit, which would like, after a couple times, it just kind of cut your tongue a little bit because it's kind of, it's not sharp, but it's, it's not comfortable. But it was somehow irresistible. So there's Underdog. These were vacuum formed. They're cheap as, oh, and you know what? I must have worn this to school because it has my name in it. Mom wrote my name. But here's the actual star of this one. Popeye the Sailor Man. I loved Popeye. I loved those cartoons. I still do. Now, I would watch the color ones. Um, they would have a bunch of Popeyes and Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck and other, I think Woody Woodpecker, under United Artists. And they'd play those like before school or after school. Um, later in life, I got to see the ones that Fleischer did. Oh my God, they're weird. Again, have my name up in there. And uh, this one, and this, you can tell, this is a rubber band that we had to fix this with. Good old Popeye. And the nice thing with these was, you know, again, you didn't get to wear them usually before Halloween because <laughs> even when they were brand new, they were... They were fragile. So, you know, you kind of had to wait. And you, you probably would wear it to school because they do a Halloween party, which they I think they still do. Although nowadays, they'll call it like a... You know, we used to have a big Halloween carnival at the elementary school on the weekend. It was so much fun. And now they'll call them harvest festivals <laughs> because they don't want to offend somebody with Halloween, you know. But it always, to me, is like, I live in Las Vegas. We're not harvesting anything. I mean, the only thing we harvest here are people who make bad decisions on the strip. We harvest a lot of money from them, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, you do the... So you'd wear it for the Halloween carnival. You'd wear it in your Halloween party at school. All the kids, we they do a little parade of all the kids from all the classes walking around in their costumes. That's always that was always fun, and I can remember when I was in college. Um, the school that my mother taught kindergarten at was across the street from UNLV. That little campus is now owned by UNLV and is used uh, for teaching lawyers, which is kind of appropriate. And um, so I would drive with her in the morning to her school, and I would help her out in her class a little bit. And then I'd walk over, do all my classes, come back over and, you know, drive home. And so I got to, like, participate a little bit with, with the kids. And I can remember those those Halloween parades, you know, seeing it as an adult from the other side. Man, the kids were, like, so proud to be showing off their costumes. It was awesome. I love that so much. So, um, but the nice thing with these was after Halloween, you could play in the costumes. Because at that age, you were probably going to outgrow the costume by the next year. And, um, you know, so if, if it got messed up, it was no big deal. So let's save that one. for Let's look at this one first. Because this is the actual Popeye costume. So look at this. This is, this is plastic. My generation grew up wearing plastic. I mean, I'm not joking. We wore tough skin jeans right which were essentially polyester we wore plastic jeans to school when i was a kid and let me tell you something no shorts were allowed in elementary school black top 115 degrees in the summer wearing your tough skin plastic jeans we probably lost about five pounds a day in water in water weight but this is the little smock that you could that you would wear because obviously the real Popeye always walked around wearing a smock with him on it exploding out of a television set. Craziest thing in the world, these costumes. We didn't care. We loved it. I was wearing Popeye. And it looks like my name is written on there backwards, so I assume it was written on the back, on the inside, that bled through. So you had that, and then here's like the 
the pants. Crotch ripped out. That was traditional. Because, um, again, if you were just wearing these little costumes to you know, walk around and trick-or-treat in, you're fine. You put these things on to play in, and you're running around like an idiot in the house, um, they're falling apart on you. And I, the crotch was always one of the first things to go. Yes, yeah, I've now used the word crotch twice. Ooh, three times in this video. So there's that one. Now this other costume that's in here, I don't remember ever wearing. The costumes I remember, Popeye, Underdog, and Batman. And I was convinced I was going to have Batman in here, and I did not. But what I did find was Superman. Now this is a lot tinier, so probably why I do not remember wearing it. And this is actually not too bad. I mean, you have the Superman logo. You got a belt with a little S on it. Oh, oh my goodness. 1973 copyright. I would have been one. I don't think I probably wore it when I was one, though. Um, but it has the little, little plastic boots on the bottom in red. So um, you don't have the red trunks. But other than that, pretty good. It probably had a cape with it at one point, I would think. Yeah, I do not remember ever dressing up as Superman. But I clearly did. Now, I will say that the earliest memory I have as a child is Halloween. Um, this is a memory that I wasn't sure was even real at one point. Because it didn't make sense to me. Um, the memory was of an uncle of mine telling me to make sure to come over to his house on Halloween, you know, because he and my aunt were giving away cookies, which you could do once upon a time without everybody freaking out. They made cookies and they were going to give those away for Halloween. Now, the reason this memory didn't seem that it could be right to me was um, I only lived where he lived when I was about maybe one to two years old. Um, it was while my dad was in the service and we'd moved back to be with family. Other than that, the only time we went to see family was in the summertime, summer vacation. My mom was a teacher and obviously my sister and I would be out of school. And so I was going, you know, we're always there in the summer. He couldn't have been talking about Halloween in the summer. I talked to my mom about it one time, and she says, oh, yeah, 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 you would have been maybe like one or two years old. So my earliest memory is about um, food, which is tough when you're a fat guy, but there it is. Uh, yeah, it, my memory is about my uncle telling me about going to his house to get cookies for Halloween, which I assume we probably did. So here's, this is the old... Collegeville Ben Cooper sort of design of costumes that we got when we were kids. $2.39 in the late 70s was reasonable. I don't know what that would come out to now, but I would assume maybe in the neighborhood of like 20 bucks. But we're not done. As I unartfully move stuff out of the way. So a few years back, I had this idea that I was very proud of that said, you know what? They should make adult-sized Ben Cooper costumes for Gen Xers to wear kind of as a joke, right? If you're in your late 20s, early 30s, and you're a Gen Xer, and you, got, you, know, you have like a Halloween party to go to, it'd be kind of funny to show up in one of those cheap ass looking costumes um you know because the other people there would probably get the joke and of course they never existed until last year spirit halloween my daughter wanted to go take a look at spirit halloween i walk in 
And what do I find? Star Wars. Ben Cooper. I'm sure it's whoever owns this now. Vacuform mask and costume. Top. Also in French. Kind of have the old style stuff here. C-3PO, Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, and Yoda. This is the Darth Vader. I don't think I ever had a Star Wars costume when I was a kid, which is really weird. Nine ninety seven, and I it was on sale. This was the day before Halloween that we went. So everything that was left was on sale. Here we got the side, the top, same as the bottom. Okay. So the good the old school graphics. Now, this is still sealed. I have not opened this one. You can kind of get a look at him in there. Oh god, you can see the reflection of me too. Okay, so like I didn't, you know, <laughs> I didn't brush my hair this morning. I needed to do videos. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be on camera, so what the heck. So please ignore the man behind the curtain. So they had Star Wars and they also had Batman from the classic TV series. And this would essentially be the costume that I remembered having as a kid was in this very much in this style. I was a absolute freak for 60s Batman and I still am. So this one I did open. So let's take a look. So we got the vacuform mask. It is thicker. It has this little foam part for your forehead. It has a better strap. So these are higher quality. But we got the Batman mask. And this has got to be pretty accurate to the original. It sure looks it. I'd have to look at him again. But it looks pretty accurate to me. And they do not give you a full-size costume to get into. But essentially, you get this little deal that goes just around your shoulders and ties, kind of like a little cape. So it's not full on. It's the same, well, it's not that plastic material, but it's the polyester material that a lot of the costumes were made of at the time. Um, it's a pretty, pretty accurate to old school Ben Cooper. I'm trying to open this without totally unfolding, but so you can get an idea. We got a utility belt. It's got the little cape on the back with the bat. The bat scalloping. Is that, a, is that the right term? I guess it is. So like I say, I got these last Halloween. Um, haven't used them, but I had to do it. And I selling for 10, but I think they were on sale for maybe like five. And they had they had Superman, they had Flash. I think they might have had Wonder Woman. I just got Batman and Darth Vader. I didn't want to go nuts at the time. But um, couldn't resist it. But I was like, you know what, though, guys? You're like, I don't know, about 10 or 15 years late on this one. I think that these would have sold in the late 90s to early 2000s pretty well. Um, just on nostalgia alone for all of us Gen Xers who had a party or, you know, you're going to walk around trick-or-treating with your kids. You could put one of these things on, you know, again, kind of as a joke. The other, uh, the other parents are going to get that and uh, would probably enjoy it. So there we go from the 1970s, early 70s, Popeye and Underdog to 2022, Batman and Darth Vader. The legend of Collegeville and Ben Cooper lives on. I hope you enjoyed this video and this little look back at Halloween of the olden days. God, you know, 70s and 80s kind of feels like the golden age of Halloween and trick-or-treating. We don't get that many kids at the house every year for trick-or-treats. I don't get a few, but not a, not like it was. There's not as many kids around. And people do them now at school and malls and trunk or treat. And it's like, man, but that's not fun, man. 
Might as well just buy your kid a bag of candy and say, Happy Halloween. It was going door to door. It was also like the neighbors, you know, they're adults, but they remembered trick-or-treating when they were kids. And it was kind of fun for them to see the kids in their costumes in the neighborhood. And, you know, it was like a way for them to participate and recapture a little bit of their youth. It's it's kind of sad that it's fallen off, but, um, well, things like that happen. Things like that do happen. But hopefully, you can find these out there somewhere. They're probably, if nothing else, on eBay. But they might be stocking them at Spirit again this year. And maybe pick up a couple, relive the memories, put them on to embarrass your kids. And hopefully, you'll have a fun Halloween this year. It's in just a few more weeks. It's coming. I hope you enjoyed this video, though, and if you did, I'd love it if you would give it a like and maybe think about subscribing and um, share with your friends. That helps me to grow this little, little channel where I talk about old pop culture and maybe a little new pop culture and just try to focus on fun and focus on finding cool, enjoyable things in this crazy world of ours. I hope God blesses you. I hope you're kind to one another out there. And uh, I hope you manage to find some time to have a little fun. Maybe some trick-or-treat fun. And I will see you again next time on Dad's Den of Pop Culture. <laughs>